Welcome back to our thoughts for the day. Uh, this week we've been considering how important it is to get a correct understanding of who God is and how this maps through to the Lord Jesus. And today I'd like to consider uh, the name by which God wanted his people, the Israelites, to know him. Um, Moses was looking after his father-in-law's sheep when he approached a burning bush in the desert. And then God spoke to him out of the bush. I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. And I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. I will be with you. So God tells Moses six things. He tells him he has seen the misery of his people in Egypt. He has heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. He is concerned about their suffering. He has come down to rescue them and to bring them up out to a better place of their own. He is sending Moses to lead them, and he will be with Moses. Moses then asked God who he should tell the Israelites to send him. And God replies, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. This is an unqualified declaration of the self-existence of God. It expresses everything that God is and everything that is God. It expresses that God is dependable and faithful, that he is a God who does not change a God who keeps his promises. In the NIV, this is expressed as the, the Lord, all in capital letters, and in some Bibles as Jehovah. This became a precious and sacred name to the Israelites. Indeed, it was considered blasphemy to write or say the word, punishable by death. And in John, John's Gospel, when Jesus was confronted by the Jews, challenging him concerning his authority, he said, Very truly, I tell you, before Abraham was born, I am. And at that, they picked up stones to stone him, as he had claimed to be, I am, Jehovah. So what does this tell us about God and about Jesus? Well, this is our God, a God we can have absolute confidence in, a God who consistently keeps his promises. And of course, the same applies to his son, Jesus. And for those who put their faith in Jesus as their Lord, the promises to Israel equally apply. He sees our problems. We are slaves to sin and death. He hears our prayers. He is concerned about our sufferings. Through his death, Jesus rescues us from sin and death. He has prepared a place in his father's kingdom for us. And he is always with us. In a world where things change so quickly, he is always faithful to keep his promises if we put our trust in him. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we worship and praise you that you are unchanged and unchanging. We thank you that you see our problems, you hear our prayers, you are concerned about us. We thank you that through your death on the cross, you rescued us from sin and death, and that you have prepared a place in your Father's kingdom for us. And Lord, we thank you that you are always with us. Amen.